All right, this is from your review sheet, getting ready for the chapter three test. Um, I've picked out various problems. I've actually changed the numbers slightly, okay? So, in other words, you know, this is similar to number six on your review sheet. It's not the exact problem, so don't get confused, right? These, I've changed this slightly. Like, for instance, number six on your review sheet says zero equals four over 14y plus 28, right? Well, this says four over seven y plus 28. So does it make sense? I've made it very similar, but it's slightly different, okay? So again, these are similar to the review sheets that I'm gonna give you, but they're not the same. Okay, so same. zero equals four sevenths y plus 28. You notice a lot of these questions are gonna have fractions in them. There's a reason for that, because I wanna make sure you can handle the fractions, all right? So whenever we have fractions, what do we do? We, we run and hide away from them, or we deal with them? Deal with them. How do we deal with, first of all, what makes something a fraction? A denominator. A denominator, right? And what's the quick and easy way to knock the denominator pins out of the way? Uh, cross cancel or Multiply by the right number. Yeah, in this case, 7. So there you go. That's exactly right. We multiply by 7. Why 7, Bernadette? Any idea? No idea? Exactly. Okay. So please go write those down. Write this one down. This is. I, should, I guess I really should put beside. It, I should put like number six. Okay. This is like number six. All right. And so we've got zero equals, and then we cancel that. Four y plus seven times twenty-eight. What's that? Anybody know? 196, I think. Yeah. 196. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, what, what, what do we do with that zero? I mean, some people get confused by that and they aren't sure what to do next. Yeah. Any idea? Can we do 7 and 28? Why did we, oh, because, well, that's a good question. How can we multiply everything by 7 and not by 28? Yeah, because zero is fraction. Why didn't we subtract 28 first? We could have. That, sure, we could have done that. And we still would have got the same. We still would have got the same answers. And you still would have had to multiply by 7. So the point is that we deal with a fraction first. Deal with the thing that's bugging you first. Tackle it and get it out of the way. And we did. We multiplied by 7 because that's the denominator. That's the thing that, that makes that a fraction. And that's what we want to knock out. Okay? If we did by 28, it wouldn't have knocked. It would have knocked that out, but it would have made this thing a lot bigger. We, don't, we want to do this by the lowest possible number we can. And that's what I keep saying about the bowling ball. You know, if you're bowling and you want to knock down pins, you don't want to pick one that's too big. If you'd pick 28, it would have knocked things down, but it would have been too big and too heavy. And that's, that's the idea. You want to pick just the right size. Knocks these down, but it's not too small, not too big. All right. So uh, both sides, what do we do? Subtract 196. Subtract 196. Okay. So... That cancels. What are we left with on both sides, Adam? What are we left with on both sides? That's what I thought you said. Good job. Right? Uh, because 0 minus 196 is negative 196. Now, on both sides, we're almost there, right? We have to get y on its own. Divide by 4. And what are we left with? y equals... I'm running out of space. Anybody know? 49? 49. Negative 49. Negative 49. Be careful about that negative, right? All right. You got that, Robin? Mm-hmm. Things down. Okay, Charlie's got an idea of what to do here. We've got x on one side and negative 2x on the other. We're going to play big rock, little rock, or what? Yeah. Um, Wait, before you answer it, what do we mean by big rock, little rock, guys? Okay, which one's smaller, 1x or negative 2x? Jonathan, which one's smaller, 1x or negative 2x? Right, everybody clear on that? Bernadette, you clear on that? Okay, so that's what we mean. Taylor, you know that, right? So go ahead, uh, go ahead. We want to move the smaller one, right? So go ahead, Charlie. Uh, subtract 1x from negative 2x. You want to agree with that, Adam? Which one's easier to move? Oh, I 2x to the yeah, you want to move, that's the whole point of the big rock, little rock thing, right? I got a few that Yeah, I, I know. Um, I kind of interrupted you. You were probably going to do it fine if I hadn't gotten away.
So what's our, our answer there? What do we do now? Connor, what's next? Um, that's 3x and that's 0 cancelled out. That's 3x plus 4, okay, good, equals 6, right? Mm -hmm. And you're right, this cancels. So there we go. We're almost done, right? What do we do on both sides? Anybody know? Yeah, Kyle? Subtract 4. Yep, subtract 4. And we're left with 3x equals? 2. Yep, and our final answer is? What are we doing? X equals, two. X equals two over three. Good. Let's have a look at these kind of questions. They're called literal equations. This is also on your review sheet. It's like number 20. It means it's not quite the same, but it's very close. Mm -hmm. This one is like number 19. It's very similar. And this one we're solving for H, and this one down here we're solving for A. Now, what can you see about H? Where is it in relation to the parentheses? And do you have any observations to make? Because that's always the first step in any question. You want to make sure that you observe what kind of question it is. Jonathan, what can you say about that? We're looking for H, right? What do we have to move out of its way? Yeah? What, what's in the way of us solving for H? Just intuitively. We want to get H on its own, right? Mm -hmm. So just intuitively, what are we going to have to move around? You have to move one third around? Yeah, you want to move one third. You want to do something with that, right? Yeah. We don't like to look at that. What did we just say about fractions? Do we like fractions? Yes, we do. Well, okay. We love them because we like to kick them out. We like to get them out of our place. You know what I mean? So shouldn't we just deal with that fraction first of all? What do you think, Taylor? Should we deal with that? Yeah. Why not? Again. What makes this a fraction, Bernadette? The one or the three? The three. So how do we get rid of that three? Multiply it by Multiply. Three. Yeah, multiply by three on both sides. So this becomes 3a, right? See you later. And then this cancels. And now somebody tell me what we should write on the next line. Kia, what should we write on the next line? 3a. Yep, 3a. Equals h. Yep. In parentheses, B1 plus B2. Right, and this 1 and 2 are only there to tell you this is B1 and that's B2, right? Oh. That's all it is. Okay. They're not exponents or anything like that. They're just, they're called subscripts. Uh, we could have, they could be, uh, it could be like C and D, but instead we call them B1 and B2, okay? Now, we're not there yet, but we're getting there. We're trying to get H on its own. What's in the way of H being on its own? What B? B1 and B2. And H times B1 and B2, right? So a lot of people are tempted to kind of distribute that. Is there anybody tempted to do that here? Caroline, what, why would you do that? Oh, no, I was tempted to. You're tempted to. Yeah, I understand the temptation. You're tempted, Adam? PEMDAS. 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 <laughs> what about PEMDAS? Parentheses. There's nothing you can, you can't add B1 and B2. Uh, there's no exponents. There's no multiplication. I mean, it's not bad thinking, but we're solving an equation. It's a little different. PEMDAS is more when there's not an equation sign. Okay? Yeah, Connor? So B1 and B2 are different Bs. They're, not they're different Bs. Bs, yeah. Otherwise, we could add them together, but we can't. But anybody have any idea? Let's just say that was just 3. If that were 3, what would you do? If it were 3H and you're solving for H? Oh, I would divide. You'd divide by 3, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay, well, instead of it being 3, it's B1 plus B2. So what do you do to it? You divide it. Okay. Divide this. Here's the other golden rule. Right? Why did we do that? But what happens to this? They cancel out. They cancel out. See? You just set it up to be knocked down. So your bowlers either way. Right? So what's left over? Now notice this is 3a over b1, b1 plus b2. What's our final answer? If I go h equals what? 3a over b1 plus b2. Absolutely. That's it. So you guys are all right with that? It's not too bad.